What does dollar do from here? I think it's very difficult to see a sharp dollar retracement weaker again over the next few weeks. Uh, the market is in risk aversion mode and the dollar tends to do quite um, well, uh, particularly against emerging markets. Now, if we look further out towards the end of the year, however, I think we're approaching a very important inflection point. Uh, the market is pricing a huge amount of divergence uh, between the Fed and the ECB and other central banks that have turned very dovish. But if, and again this is a big if, uh, trade war worries intensify, if global growth expectations go further down, it's going to be very difficult for Fed market pricing to stay immune to this. So well, I think uh, dollar, the dollar can continue to do quite well over the next few weeks. From a medium term perspective, I think we're approaching the limits of how much the dollar can rally against the developed market market currencies in particular. Okay, uh, George, overall, if you look at, uh, you know, g global trade wars, would it be inflationary or deflationary for the U.S.? Uh, I would say both. <laughs> uh, near term, definitely inflationary. Um, uh, trade wars, tariffs are essentially a tax. Uh, the price of imported goods would go up. However, medium term, it is a, a negative uh, shock to growth, uh, to, to demand. And that's how the <laughs> ECB uh, have said they would see it. And that's, I would argue, how the Fed uh, would look at it as well. And it's the reason why uh, the curve in the U.S. continues to flatten. Essentially, the market is pricing uh, high risks of structurally weaker uh, trend growth. Where are we in the idiosyncratic meter, George? When we look at EM currencies, we're told interview after interview, it's a separate story. Argentina, India, Turkey, India today. It's all idiosyncratic. When does it call us? Where are we on that study of moving from individual stories over to a combined EM? Well, I'd say we're way past the idiosyncratic at, at this stage. That was definitely the case around March and April, where the yeah. weakness in emerging markets was, was very concentrated. Uh, but, but what's interesting is, uh, number one, you're now starting to see outflows, portfolio outflows that are fairly broad-based. So this is not just confined to a few specific EM stories. And most importantly, we're, we're seeing the pressure start shifting to China, which, uh, as the world's second largest economy, then starts having ripple effects in other Asian currencies, for instance. So I expect this focus on China to maintain over the summer months and, and how stable um, China remains is going to be quite critical for EM over the summer. Away from dollar renminbi, which currency pair is the one you watch on renminbi? So if you look at dollar Korea, uh, dollar Taiwan, all these uh, dollar Asia crosses have very high beaters uh, to dollar China. What I would say, however, is the most important thing is these supply chains. Uh, at the moment, China is uh, at the, at the, bearing the brunt of the criticism uh, in terms of trade imbalances right. from the Trump administration. But you have to bear in mind, global trade is very globalized. So if there's pressure on China, there's pressure on Korea, there's pressure on Taiwan, because these supply chains are very integrated, and that's why dollar Asia overall has started going higher.